So his name is Robert G. Smith. So Robert has been our uh, past event uh, conference as well. I'm so glad to have him here with us today again. So uh, Robert Smith, he is international speaker, teacher, uh, neuroplastician, and the creator of FAST EFT training. Over 40 years of studying the mind, human behavior, physical and the mental health, spirituality, and the more has uh, and more has all led Robert into a career aimed at helping others change their lives. As a worldwide teacher, international speaker, neuroplastician, behavioral engineer, interesting term, and the drug <laughs> rehab uh, cons consultant, Robert is one of America's leading experts on stress, trauma, PTSD, addictions, physical healing, and the neural plasticity. Welcome, Robert. Good to be here. Very excited. Well, we don't talk about love. What is love? How does love work? And the mechanics of the mind. Most of you, as she said, I'm a neuroplastician. So I became a student of the word. Uh, and truth is the foundation. But what is love? You know, one of the most important things to understand what love is, because, you know, what is love? What is really love? Now, Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, I said, love your neighbor as yourself. That means love your neighbor as yourself. That means you'll love your neighbor as you love yourself. Which means also it says, if you despise your neighbor, you despise yourself. If you hate your ex-husband or ex-wife or your neighbor or, or the kid on the bus that you grew up with or your in-laws or your outlaws, you hate them as you hate yourself. Now, is that love? Well, you know, John Lennon had a song, All There Is Is Love, Love, Love. As a, as a person who study about the mind and about the body and how the mind-body works together, you know, when you think about, you know, what's the opposite of love? Well, some will say fear, some will say hate. But if you think about it logically, if you hate spiders or you hate the fear of heights, what is fear doing for you? You know, what is fear doing for you? Oh, fear is trying to protect you. And is there love and protection? And the answer is yes. So what is love really? Now, I broke it down to a very simple understanding. Love is, is, is another word for survival or staying alive. But in the Bible, the one phrase throughout the entire Bible is this one phrase said more than any other, which is fear not. So, so what is love? So you love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't like yourself, you don't like your neighbor either. If you're angry with someone, you're angry at yourself. Have you heard not to say, judge not, do not judge, you be not judged? Do not condemn, or you will not be condemned. Again, it goes back to us, doesn't it? Forgive, and it'll be, it'll be forgiven. That means if you forgive from inside, here, you're forgiven. And it'll be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over, and poured into your lap. With the measure you use, it'll be measured to you. So what is love? Hmm. Love is what you do within you. Now again, the greatest commandment of all, the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself, but the greatest commandment is what? You will love your Lord God with all your heart, the pumping thing, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. Now, if you think about it, love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Now, again, we go back to and we start pointing at you'll love your neighbor as you love yourself. And of course, um, you know, what is a, you know, again, love, love, love. What is love? And there's a, there's a parable in Matthew 6, 6, 19 to 21. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field which a man has found it and so excited. So he goes and sells everything to buy this field. It's like a merchant, you know, King of Heaven is like a merchant seeking good pearls and then find the one great pearl with great price. He goes this way, sells everything to go buy this pearl. Now, what is the pearl again? 
the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God? What does Jesus say the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is, you know? It's inside your heart. It's inside you. Because what you hold here, you project out there. So the most important thing is discover how to love. Now, how to love yourself and how to be kind to yourself. And, and how you do that is I always see that the mind, the mind is a temple. You know, Jesus said you don't need to go to the temple because it's inside you. So my thinking is if the kingdom of heaven is in your heart, where's the kingdom of hell? Oh, same place, right? Because what I've discovered, the cause of all of our problems, the cause of all problems, you know, I look, that's my mission is to find why do we have problems? What's the cause of our problems? And be honest with you, the cause of problems is perception and memories, how you perceive things and memories. So in order to love, the, love your neighbor as yourself, you got to learn to love you. Then go inside of you and keep your temple clean. Keep your head clean. Change the negativities. Update memories. Jesus says, if your eyes cause you to stumble, pluck it out. He's not talking about eyeballs, guys. He says, what you, uh, what I, how I see it is what you see within you that causes you problems. Take it out. So what we need to do is learn how to, I call it, you know, purification, sanctification, is to keep your thoughts clean, discovering how you can change those unpleasant memories inside of ourselves. Because to be honest with you, you're stuck with you and everything you have within you. You know, as, as a follower of truth, Jesus' teachings, the, the, the fact is you believe, and as you believe, you do. So we continuously work on ourselves. We continue purifying our temple, our minds. We release and let go of angers, hurts, and judgments against others. Because remember, as we just saw right here, when you judge or you condemn or you hate something outside you, that starts inside you. And this is the, this is the field we need to own. This is the pearl we want to possess. Because again, like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven, no moth can destroy, no rust can eat, and no thief can take. And that's your mind, your memories, your references, and what you hold inside. So in order to love your neighbor, you got to learn to love you. Because I always thought, I just got to love them more. Maybe I'll get better. You know, it's, it's, almost like, it's almost like an alcoholic trying to feel better. They drink alcohol to feel better. So I feel like crap, so I'm going to go help somebody. Hopefully it'll help them, and I'll feel better too. But the truth is, you know, if you're driving the bus for church and you're angry every day you drive the bus because of the kids, are you really doing a good job for yourself and for your inner kingdom? Because what we possess and practice and rehearse on a daily routine is the poison that takes us to the depths of hell, in a sense. We want a way out, but there's only one way out. And that is going within and get your Hoover, suck up all those unpleasant memories and re-update those. Now, if you don't know how to update memories, if you don't know how to change the cause of all of our problems, you're always going to, you're going to be like, Paul, I want this, but I have this inner battle. And I say, let's end the inner battle by knowing how to make peace with yourself. And as you make peace with yourself, your life starts to get better. You become a better person because again, it is an investment in you. And because we are a beacon, we're the light that shines in our neighborhoods and our families. And if mama's having a bad day, everybody else is having a bad day, that's not a bright light. <laughs> We've got to make peace with ourselves, make peace with what's inside of ourselves. And I think there's no greater love than to learn how to like you from within you. Don't pass judgments on other people. If you have an issue with your president or you have issue with the next door neighbor, you have issue with your in-laws or outlaws, the issue is you. And again, you, it sets you free. You know, I, I coined the phrase ultimate forgiveness. And it's not going to my brother and say, hey, I forgive you for being a jerk. Ultimate forgiveness is changing the memories inside of us for the reasons we thought we needed to forgive our brother. 
because you're making peace with yourself. So love is being kind within you. Love is getting the hoover and cleaning out those unpleasant memories. Love is walking in the sandals that Jesus wore. We don't want to be the Christian who worshiped the window that he went out of. We want to follow him out the window and go into a path that will create a life that's much healthier for us. So, you know, neuroplasticity is the mind's ability to change and adjust. And, you know, Jesus clearly said, you know, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, kindness, temperance, and what? Self-control. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. Let's use it in a way that we're going to love ourselves. And what you do inside you, you're going to do outside you. So that's my message is learn how to love you. You know, learn how to love you. You're a good person. You know, although you were born in a crazy emotional environment, I was. <laughs> I was a crazy emotional environment. How do you survive? You have to learn how to let go. Let go and walk forward. And of course, you know, God, God can see. He knows that you were born in an environment that was tough. But when you conquer the memories and experiences and walk in the steps of God, everything gets better. Now, granted, sanctification, purification is a daily walk because we're oftentimes triggered. And so what we want to do is just learn how to love you. Love you. And as you love you from inside you, you won't judge someone. You won't see that they're bad or something's wrong with them. You say, well, bless their hearts. They're just going through a tough time. And so that's what love is about. Yeah, good. I know somebody asked questions. What if a person just hates himself, um, thinking himself is worthless? Now, by the way, let's think about it logically. Why would you hate yourself and why would you think yourself is worthless? You know, that's a, that's a good thing. A lot of people have this. And the reason why people have this is because, one, we were emotionally trained and conditioned by our family, by our cultures, some of the teachings that we've learned. Because if you hate yourself, guess what you're going to do to other people? You're going to hate them too, if only inside yourself. So learning how to let go of the past and how we represent the past changing how we internalize and hold memories. Most people don't realize that memories are adjustable. They're extremely adjustable. They change every time you visit according to science. So when you learn how to give, give yourself the understanding that life happened, we all make mistakes, the mistake, the experiences are over, don't replay them, learn from it and move forward. This is so important to understand. Um, be honest with you, to hate yourself is a form of love. It's not what you call the higher vibration of love. And the reason why you do that is because you've had unpleasant experiences. It's not the, it's not the good love. I have come to give you life, life more abundance. I haven't come to give you life more miserableness. Now granted, there could be, but what we want to do is move past that. It is, uh, it is so important to be internally, I see, intern, internally about our relationship with God and others. Yes, understand internally. It all Because remember, how we see God is how we see ourselves too. Because we hold God within ourselves. And how you hold God within yourself, also how you represent yourself. So it's super, super important. Well, again, what if you, somebody asks, what do you do when you don't seem to be able to learn from your mistakes? It's not that you, you, you haven't seemed to be able to learn from it, but the deal is when you have a mistake, when you do an, have an experience and your mind has captured that experience, it's almost like a trance. It's, it's a state of repeating pattern. It's a, it's a state of mind. And so what you want to do is go and change the memory it's like the worst thing you could do to your child is says, go, go to the corner and think about all the bad things you did. So what's that little boy going to go or that little girl going to go in the corner and think about all the bad things they did? And then they rehearse and replay and they build a bad negative self-image. I'd say go to the corner and think of better ways that you could have done this. Ways that would have been better. So what we need to do is let go of the mistakes because mistakes are not mistakes. They're learning opportunities. And some people stay in that mistake and they replay that mistake, and they stay stuck in that mistake. They get a tattoo on their forehead because of the mistake. They join groups because of the mistakes, and they build the great identity and value. So what you do is you look at the memory, you adjust how you feel, you change how you hold the memory. It means in your mind, do something better. And when you do something better in your mind, you'll do something better outside yourself. Remember, when you judge other people, the judgment's inside you first. So when you have 
a judgment against yourself about a mistake, you stay in the mistake where you say, you know what, I made a mistake. It's over. Now I could do this differently and then just do it. I know there's logic to this. And of course, you know, uh, knowing how the mind works and knowing how uh, laying on of hands work and knowing how neuroplasticity works, all of these are so important to the early Christian church. And that's what we need to do is just kind of go back and walk in the steps of Christ, do the things from within ourselves, learn how to be kind in our side of ourselves, and then you get the big changes. Now, of course, I'm a do it now person. You know, I want to change now. I don't want to take 30 years of therapy. You know, I don't want to put rocks in my shoes to suffer so that it'll remind me of how horrible I am. I want to hold on to the memories that are pleasant and kind and loving and, and cherishing. Because remember, what you practice in mind, you get again in time. So again, that's where I'm coming from. And that's where Jesus is coming from. He says, sin, he never used the word sin, by the way. They, they translated it as sin. King James did. He basically said, you made a mistake. Get up and go on. Don't do it again. So again, this is what we need to do. It's okay, I made a mistake. So what? I can learn from this. I'll do something different. And that is walking in the steps. Love. And how to, how to renew your mind. That's the $100 question. There are faster ways to renewing the mind. I mean, you know, there's the old way of doing it, like doing affirmations, trying to be positive. But the problem with the mind is a, the mind has a great survival system. The judgment, the, the pain, the hurts, the accidents, the, the heartbreaks, whatever we hold inside of us, our brain is going to use that again and again and again. So we want, logically, I want this, but our brain said, ah, I got proof, it ain't going to happen. I know what your mother said to you. I know the bad things that happened. So the, the, how to renew your mind is to update and change the painful parts of your mind. Remember when Jesus said, a divided house will fall. I want this, but my brain says, uh -huh, no, it ain't going to happen. You know what happened when you're too successful with people like you. Bad things going to happen. So what we want to do is be in alignment consciously and unconsciously. Now, when I say unconscious, uh, we call it the limbic operating system, which is subconscious, memories, references. So when you make peace with the five types of memories, which is emotions, feelings, and sensations, images, movies, slideshows in your mind, auditory, the sounds, the tones, your mother's voice, your voice, the tastes and smells. When you know how to adjust the inside of a part of your world, your world becomes better. And that's what we need to renew our mind, is to purify our mind, update our mind, get rid of the stuff that isn't so pleasant inside of our mind. Now, if you can't do that, you need to learn to do that because that is the pearl in the field inside you is that peace that you want to possess, own, caress, and live and walk from. And that is that, that divine God spark within. The, the brain, for a lot of people, the brain is a scary place because you don't know how to use it. You don't know how to adjust it. And be honest with you, every one of you know this is true. When you have problems, it's coming from your memories and references. When you set yourself free from those painful memories and references, the problems disappear. And one person said, have you noticed since you started using Robert's process, you don't pray as much? And they go, oh yeah, I'm not as miserable as much. I'm not begging God to save me. And the deal is, is that when you're walking in the shoes of the divine presence, that means walking in truth, practicing truth, you're not miserable. You're non-judgment, not attachment, and then you're walking from understanding, which is the presence of God, to be honest with you. When you, when you walk from the, in presence, you're not judging, you're not condemning, you're not, you're not doing anything, but you're just staying in the moment with non-judgment and love. Everything is good. Even when bad things are happening, it's just an opportunity to grow and become a better person. Yes, that's right, Kelly. Problems come from memories and references. Now, remember what your brain does, it uses memories and references and creates programs. Judgment programs, anger programs, sad programs. Uh, years ago, you know, we, I've heard of the serenity prayer. And of course, I didn't like the old serenity prayer, so I updated the prayer. Updated to where it's a little bit more practical, logical, and actually applicable in our life. And so that's the prayer I'd like to share with you guys today. I wrote this many years ago. 
I have a tendency to see things and I think, how can I make this better or more practical? And of course, you know, studying the Bible as a teenager, I have lots of notes of everything, you know. Um, I, I, looked, I looked at the word stress. Because in our world, stress is the leading cause of death, suicide, health issues, etc. But the problem is, stress is not even listed in the concordance of the Bible. Jesus never used the word stress. He must have used something else. Lust of the flesh, anger, judgments, criticisms, etc. Everybody just take a deep breath and close your eyes and maybe just kind of listen to these words. Thank you, God, for granting me serenity to accept life as it is. I understand that I can improve. Your essence guides my path through the hard times. It gives me the ability to live in each moment of each day. Hardships come and go with ease as your guidance lightens my path for growth and understandings. The fading past frees me to be stronger and more loving. Your presence guides me as I walk and act as a faithful student to your truth. Releasing all the judgments, all the attachments, creates a great forgiveness for all, especially within myself. Your presence surrounds me as I am blessed wherever I am, for I am in you and you are deeply within me forever. Amen.